Yesterday, if you remember, we're learning <clears throat> from this uh, beautiful uh, essay. Originally, it was a speech by the first Rebbe of Chabad, and he's explaining how all the Jewish people are one menorah. The menorah, like, was the, the what was it, the candelabra, the, the, the candle holder that was in the holy temple, and it had one base to it, and it had seven branches coming out. There were really six branches. There was the middle pole. And that had a, a, a lamp on it. And of course, these lamps were made from, from uh, it was gold, it was pure gold. And uh, it was the, the, the lamps were filled with oil and wicks, and then you had to be lit. And so here the Rebbe is pointing out a different, a, a different idea. He first of all expressed the idea, if you remember yesterday, the idea of gold. We said gold is fear. Fear of God is a very healthy thing. Very healthy thing. And I mean, that's really the answer to the world's problems now. If you look at the crazy things that are going on in the world, the answer is, is that nobody really has the fear of God. And uh, <coughs> Avram said it, Yaakov said it, when they were by the, um, in strange places. So they were asked, why did you lie? You know, why did you say this? Because there's no fear of God here. And I was afraid that they would kill me. Right, they would kill me because there's no fear of God. This is that there's no fear of God over here. <clears throat> what does it mean, fear of God? Fear of God means that you you feel that there's there's a creator and that you're being created for a purpose and that you don't want to go against this purpose. Because if you go against the purpose, you're going against your whole the essence of your being. And even though God creates the world in such a way that we don't feel this at all, we feel that we exist. Uh, I say um, unconditionally, and you can do whatever you want. And the fact is, is it's that that's what it is, right? You can do all the sins in the world. You get all these big sinners, you know, Achashverosh and all these people, and Haman, and they they lived. They did all sorts of terrible sins, and they still live. That's the way God makes the world. But the fact of the matter is, is that if a person doesn't realize that his whole very existence depends on God. So he's going to go on the wrong path in life. You know, what's going to happen to him is not our business. My, my business, anyway. I mean, many people know about this stuff. We're talking about <clears throat> really physically, you, a person will take the wrong path in life, and his whole life will be, you want to call it meaningless, worthless, on a, on a, on a mistake. Right? Like a person who thinks that he bought the Brooklyn Bridge and he's really happy, you know, he put out $2 million, something like that, and then he's got a deed, the whole deed is false, and he loses the deed, right? he loses the deed, so he really thought that he owned the Brooklyn Bridge, and it was really happy, but in fact, he didn't own it, it's the same thing, a person is not really living in a true life, I, what's the purpose of a true life, true, true life, a person lives a true life, as he feels, if you have fear of God, and you live accordingly, then you're happy, you're, you're free, you're free, you're free, of of unnecessary worry because you know that you're in the hands of your creator <clears throat> that's what it means fear of god it's like if you drive on the if you drive you drive on the right side of the road so you're free you don't have to worry about people smashing into you the chances somebody's going to drive on the wrong side of the road opposite you are very very slim but if you don't go according to the words if you don't have natural fear of the laws and of this so you want to drive on whatever side of the road you want and everybody else does the same thing so, you know, chances of a head-on collision are going to be very great. And also, you probably are not going to arrive at your dest destination. Because if you drive on that wrong side of the road, maybe you'll take the, whole, the wrong road. <laughs> so, in other words, there is a goal in life. There is meaning in life. And people can feel, they can realize everybody wants this meaning. They want, you know, and here we're saying that the meaning in life is the Torah. That's what God gave the Torah for. And that leaves a lot of leeway for individual expression exactly the opposite that that makes possible in, in individual expression you'll be less apt to be <clears throat> to fall into in some sort of pitfalls and all they got this crazy woke thing or communism thing right everybody believed in communism everybody that was swept over the world and it was all wrong it was just all wrong right? it was just all wrong so okay so that's the idea of fear of god fear of god is a very good thing and when a person has the fear of god that's an opening that's a door that connects him. If God is really real and God is really creating me, so God is pretty good. You know, he's really, he's creating me. That's pretty good. Let's make this bigger over here. 
That's what we said. That's the gold. That's the message of the Jewish people to the world, that it's gold, fear. They have a natural fear of God. Then if you remember, the Rebbe said something even more. This has to be miksha echad. It has to be one body. The Jewish people have to realize, when by realizing that there is God and that we are being created by God, as the, the whole world is being created by God. And that's our message to the world. And the whole world will have this proper fear of God. Now, what are people afraid of? I mean, this whole, nowadays, life is just based on total fear. They, they try to pretend that it's not, but it is. Global warming, this type of a disease. Is there enough food to go around? Is there enough? <clears throat> is that the, the, you have to worry about the white people. You have to worry about the this people. You have to worry about about the the, the false ideas going on. You've to, the, the news is telling you, you always have to be worried. There's crime going on, and you have to worry that you know maybe Trump is going to come back, or maybe he's not going to come back. Maybe will you have to, everybody has to be afraid. Everything is crumbling. Everything is going right, falling all apart right in the world. And the fact is, is that people should be afraid. People are afraid of going to hell and they're afraid because okay, the fact is people should be afraid of doing the wrong thing and forgetting about hell because the people might think, hey, maybe there's no such thing as hell. But if you really start to feel there is a creator and I'm being created and everybody's being here, everybody's here. I mean, you exist, right? That you're sure of. So when everybody has this natural appreciation and awe and fear of the creator, you know that you're living in not just a little tiny, this little, whatever is it, uh, how do you say, like a maze of this world, but there's a creator who's creating everything and he loves us. You see a bigger picture of everything, it relieves us from a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety because we let God do something. Huh? You work in your job and God provides for you. Maybe he's not gonna provide, maybe he won't provide, but God is good. And if you do an honest job, God will provide. Oh, you can bring a million examples that it won't. He says, okay, that you have to have faith. That's that's what Judaism is based on. Abraham got a million disappointments. And he still believed in God. And the Jewish people still exist. Here we are. <clears throat> and God takes care of us. Right? Miraculously. So if you just do what you, you, you be a partner with God, then God will be a partner with you. And God is the creator. He wants to provide for you. He wants to have everything. Okay. Is, but first of all, this whole business depends on the Jewish people. Remember, we learned this yesterday, the, the, the Jewish people. The Jewish people, they're the ones that are supposed to bring this message of God, the creator, and God's goodness, and the unity of the all mankind. That's the only thing that's going to unify us, is that we all exist, and there's some God that brings us into existence all the time. And that this same God has a purpose, and he gave the Torah, and he took the Jews out of Egypt. But first of all, the Jews have to be convinced of it, which that's not so easy. That's why we've got the, that's why we're reading this stuff. I mean, you probably noticed it's written in Hebrew, right? <clears throat> so this is for the Jewish people. And it's only so far, this is only for religious Jewish people. And we're talking about the whole world. So how does that figure out? So we are supposed to, anyone who gets this idea is supposed to try at least, first of all, to embody it, to live this way, and also to inform other people that God loves them as a creator. And he's creating everybody and that he loves everybody, but everybody has responsibility, which that's the biggest gift you can possibly have is responsibility. And that everybody has the ability to fulfill this. And that makes a, a meaningful life. Every, every second becomes a miracle. Okay. But first of all, the Jewish people have to get it together. And the Jewish people up to this day have not done so. And why is it? Because everybody sees the bad in the other guy. And you think, of course, I will love everybody. <clears throat> what no problem we'll get, if they all agree with me if they agree with me then i will love them which you'll find that that's not so even if everybody does agree with you you'll find there's always going to be somebody who's a little bit different a little bit has his own opinion a little bit this <clears throat> and you'll find people that are simply you know bad there are people that are destructive dishonest people jewish people yes that's true and they've got beards on they have they have tzitzes on and they put on tefillin there's there are people like that and let's say for the sake of uh, whatever it is, my, of uh, <clears throat> of the press or whatever, that it's, there are very few, but they stick out. Like a person has a boil or something on his neck and it sticks out. He can't take, think of anything else. So what are we supposed to do? So here the, here's the Rebbe gives the end. The, this is very important, I think. <clears throat> says, how could, ach, but the main thing is, there has to be complete oneness. There has to be unity. Gomor. 
Zaymza, one Jew with the other. Shaluya beat Baraz Khavero, you don't see the bad <clears throat> in other people. Now can you not see bad in other people? I mean, that's ridiculous. There's people that are bad. There's people that are dishonest. They'll, they'll, they'll borrow money, they don't give it back. <clears throat> they'll, they'll, they'll lie about a product and they'll sell it to you, and they're they're wrong, right? They, and they say, I'm sorry that the <clears throat> <clears throat> but you told me this car was brand new. Hey, I saw that you, 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 they told me you worked on the, on the speedometer, whatever it is, on the, the mile, on the mile, and you turned it back. You che cheated me. Now it wasn't me, maybe somebody else. But this, I'll, I'll call you back. I'll pay you tomorrow. Right? So you're supposed to give that person money. You can't give him money. He says, no, no. You don't give him money. The person is bad. But why is that person bad? Why is he bad? Because of me. Here we go. It says, watch this. The main thing, you have to have unity. Now, if the Jews get this together, then that'll be an example for the whole world. I mean, as you see as it is, it's pretty amazing, right? That this thing of, you know, Zionist and the Zionist and the Zionist and everybody's anti-Zionist. And that's, How many Zionists are there in the world? <laughs> how many are there, right? First of all, even in Israel, how many people are there that really believe in the Zionism business? How many of the people? Good, there's the ruling class, but there's these a million people, a hundred thousand people. Who knows how many people believe in this? How many people are actually ruling them and actually, right? You go to the Israeli government, right? There, everybody is at everybody else's throat. And the only thing that holds them together is that they have common enemies. Everybody makes common enemies. But if they would be the leading part of the power, then they, with no enemies, then everybody would be against everybody else. How can it possibly be, right? <clears throat> What's talking about? Because everybody looks to the Jews and they know that the Jews are the chosen people. It says in the Bible, right? And and you know, Christianity is as hard as it's tried to destroy Judaism. Its very essence is to destroy Judaism, but they still carry this Bible, and they they and the Bible says clearly that we're the Jews are the chosen people, right? God chose you, the Jewish people, to be his chosen people. Everybody knows it. So what do they say? Well, that used to be, but now we're the Jews, right? Everybody has their own. Somebody's here, one second. There we go. Good. I got you, Paul. I got you. <clears throat> so everybody looks to the Jews. Everyone knows that the Jews, somehow or other, they're chosen for something. I mean, it says in the Bible that they're chosen. And if you look at them, you cannot figure out what they're chosen for. And the Jews can't figure out what they're chosen for. So I'm going to tell you what the Jews are chosen for. I told you a lot of times. The Jews are chosen to tell the whole world how much God loves them. That he's creating everybody. He loves everybody. <clears throat> that God provides for everybody. He protects everybody. Zan, Mufarnes the call, Metiv the call. It says he benefits everybody. He's a king that he protects. He's Melech, Ozer, Moshiach. He helps us. Moshiach, again, we see it in our prayers over and over again. <clears throat> but first of all, the Jews have to get it together. How? Here we go. Let's see. It says, because what was the thing of the menorah? It started off as one piece of gold, and then they hid at it with, with a, a hammer. So it ended up that the things that were on the bottom went up to the top. The gold that was on the bottom of this block sometimes went up to the top, and the, the gold that was on the top sometimes went down to the bottom. And that's what it means. The more it has to be pure gold. Oh, the main thing is what it is. There has to be unity, one with the other. Shalom yabit, you won't see the bad in the other person. What does that mean, you won't see the bad? That there is up above, spiritually, there's also a menorah. And the Jewish people also come from this menorah, miksha, and it's one piece, but it's also made by pounding this spiritual menorah, that the source of the Jewish people. And when you hit it with a hammer, the top gold comes down below, and that bottom gold goes up in the top. What does it mean that the shahara, that the bad that you see in somebody else, your red lifamim sometimes comes below. The nichmas bottom run comes into a bad person. Well, the hepech and the opposite. A CSA is a mitzvah. Sometimes this bad person does something good. Lifamim, all the it comes up. The notel acher, and somebody takes it. Oh, so what's this mean? A bad person can do a good thing, and sometimes that good deed, the energy from that good deed, <clears throat> can go to somebody else's merit. Who is that other person's merit? Me. All the good that I have is only because 
of good things that bad people did. And God, for whatever reason, didn't want to give them this good. So he gave it to me. I, but I look at these other people and I say, but I mean, okay, good. So the good that I have is not really mine. It's because this guy once helped an old lady across the street, or he, he gave charity, or he did some honest thing, or whatever. He, but, but so his, the good that I have is really not mine. It comes from him. But the fact is, this guy is bad. I see that he's bad. He's a cheater. He's a liar. But anything that a person is lacking, anything that this other person is lacking, right? He has to, I have to depend that on myself. And what I have good, maybe it's somebody else. So I look at this other person, I see that he's bad. And you think, you know why he's bad? It's because of my bad thoughts and my bad deeds. And my bad, right? I did once bad things, right? Yeah, like maybe, you know, a minute ago, I thought bad thoughts. Me thought bad thoughts every single minute. <laughs> I heard a good story yesterday. A joke. I, I don't know if it's a joke. There was a famous Jew, and his name was um, the Chafetz Chaim, Rabbi Yisrael Mir HaKohen. He wrote also a book which was called uh, Mishnah Brura that most of the Jewish people, religious Jewish people go according to this book, or at least they consult the book. It's, it's a book of Jewish law. It's only on the day-to-day -day laws, the holidays and things like that. It's what's called Orachayim. It's his commentary. Anyway, he also wrote a book, and this is what he's famous for, of Lashon Hora. Lashon Hora means saying bad things about other people or damaging things about other people, right? Let's, uh, negative things. Saying negative things about other people is very, very damaging, very damaging. Not to say negative things about other people. So he used to, he lived, I don't know, 100, 100 years ago, 100 and something years ago. And he used to go around from door to door selling his books because there were no big bookstores and everything like that. And the Jews were also scattered around. So we would go door to door and sell his books. So we went to somebody's house and he knocked on the door and he said, um, I have a book I would like to sell to you. And the person, a religious Jew, said, well, well, what's the book about? And he said, the book is about Lush and Hora, saying negative things about people. And the person said, oh, I don't need that book. I don't, I don't speak, say anything negative about people. But my next door neighbor, he always says negative things about people. He really needs the book. I, I hope you got the joke, but the joke is, is that the person within this subject said a bad thing about his neighbor. So in other words, he immediately contradicted himself. So everybody thinks bad things are bad, <coughs> says the Rebbe. If you see something bad in another person, and it's very easy to see bad things in other people, or very easy to see bad things in other people, that's what all the newspapers are filled with. You see bad things in another Jew. So you have to think to yourself, the reason that person is so bad is because of me. My bad thoughts, that's what influenced him to do bad. And what about me? I'm a big tzaddik. I give classes and everything. The only reason I have good thoughts is because that comes from somebody else. Somebody else thought. The call Adam, every person has to, <clears throat> to, 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 how do you say, to, it's uh, uh, the word, as to um, blame. The, the That which is lacking, that's not the word I wanted. Has to blame what the other person is lacking because of me, myself. And whatever good I have is, you have to shama hu it comes from somebody else. Is there somebody waiting here? One minute. No, okay. Somebody else. The call Adam and every person has to tell us a chesron boba tov shalom, shamu miachir. Okay, so shaola lamaila that it went up to a top, like the, like the menorah. The ras achirim of the bad people, the bad that he sees in somebody else, that came from me. The bad things I did, that came down to him. The az yeah, be emes echa. Then all of a sudden, you won't blame the other person so much. True, the other person is bad, but he's not, it's not that he does bad. I'm the one that did the bad, and he just became a receptacle for it. It becomes, then it becomes that what? That it's one, you take responsibility. In other words, for the other person's not good things. If so, what are you, what are you, what are you supposed to do? Improve yourself? And also you don't hate the other person. You don't look at him. He's not the problem, right? I, the problem is coming through him. Don't give him money, right? He's dishonest. But the reason that he's dishonest is because of me. 
Therefore, it all becomes one hayerich, the bottom with the top, a parachin. Shekolecha, that every person, everybody should look at themselves like they are the bottom with a chaver on the other person, he's the top. The chaver, and the other person should do the opposite. The az, yochal aron, then aron a coin will be able to light the fire in every single Jew. Shehu, coin gadol, for rav, chesed, and Aaron is, is uh, great kindness. Shekol chasadim, that all the kindnesses come from him. But yochal amshich, then he can light the menorah, the menorah is one, and then he can draw down this tremendous love from Ahava to Ava Rabba. Ava Rabba means looking at the world from God's point of view. Ava Rabba means that God is creating the world from pure, unconditional love. And we look at the world from God's point of view, that the world is unconditionally good and wonderful and beautiful. And you can look at everyone, feel this love. And you can draw that into Avat Olam. Avat Olam means that you love God because of some reason. Because he creates the world because of this conditional love. But there's a lot of conditions. I mean, God creates us. He enlivens us. That's called avat olam. Love that is born from thinking, understanding, meditating, contemplating. That's avat olam. And ava rabba is the essential love that's creating us. That's creating us. That, that you can feel automatically without any thinking. But the problem is, is we don't because we're not vessels for it. That you need our own. You need the Rebbe in order to come to this level. You need these Hasidus. The Az then, Memela automatically will be like King Solomon said, your inside will be paved, coated with love. Your heart will be revealed like flaming fire. That's also this flaming fire of love. And also we said a fear, the, yeah, the, the gold. That's Balot Chatanerot. That Aaron will elevate them. So this is how to become, make yourself into a menorah. Menorah, you have to, <clears throat> unity, unity means anything bad you see in somebody else, you have to say it's because of me, and anything good that you see in yourself, you have to say this obviously comes from somebody else. Okay. <clears throat> that finished that. Now we're going to have a new subject over here. And this subject is a, a very sort of, um, how do you say, painful topic. The Jewish people were in the desert. God was providing them everything, everything they wanted. And the Jewish people started complaining. And they said, we want meat. Meat. Tanu lanu basar. Meat, 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 meat. Everybody said, we want meat. So Moses said, what, what am I going to do with these people? Right? What do you want? They want meat. He said, how can I give them meat? Moses said, how can I give them meat? What am I going to do? This, this, this. <coughs> how many Jews were there? Let's say only the men made trouble, right? So there was like about 3 million people. There was 600,000 males from the age of 20 up. So let's say they, they were the ones that made the problems. The women, usually they were okay. The women didn't seem to make any problems at all for Moses. And the children, they were too young. So the men, 600,000 people are screaming, meat, 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 we want meat. But they already had manna. They had manna was falling from heaven. They had water from a rock. They had clouds that were, they used to be slaves just a few, you know, <clears throat> days ago, whatever, weeks ago. And all of a sudden they're free, free people. And they have the Torah, they reveal God, right? So say thank you. Meat, 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 meat. Say thanks, come on, everybody. Let's, let's get together. Come on, everybody, let's go. Thank you, God. Meat, 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 meat. We want meat, we want meat. So Moses said, what do these people want from me, God? What am I supposed to do? I can't. How can I give them meat? You want me to gather all the fish in the sea and give to them? You want me to give fish? Okay, so that's what it says in the Bible, right? Now, who wrote the Bible? God wrote the Bible. So this is pretty bizarre. I mean, the people are screaming meat. And Moses said, I can't give them meat. What do you want me to do? Gather all the fish in the sea and give it to them? Who talked about fish? The to understand, dagim. they didn't ask for fish at all. They wanted basar, they wanted meat, they wanted from, from cattle meat. Or... Now, the, the manna had any taste that they wanted, but the, you couldn't see it. 
And not only that, it didn't have any really substance to it, so to speak. It satisfied them, but it was totally absorbed in their, I mean, the health food people would have gone crazy, but probably not. I mean, I'm sure there were health food people over there. Jews, Jews like to complain. Jews like to complain. By Jews, it's one of the, one of the pleasures of life is to complain. Jews love complaining. And here it is. Here was their chance. Like they're all complaining. And they were complaining, but they weren't happy they were complaining. They just want to complain and be miserable. That's the way it is. Not all the Jews, but a sufficient number of Jews. Here we have about 600,000 of them. And they're all complaining, which that's like one third of the Jewish people, that maybe more. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, so they're all complaining and they're all yelling, screaming, want meat. So Moses says, Am I going to give them fish? And it ends up that God gives them um, uh, uh, birds. He gives them the slop. So nobody got what they wanted, right? The, the, the people wanted meat. Moses said, I want to give them fish. And God said, I'll give them birds. He gave them this birds called the slop. They were all fat, the fat birds. <clears throat> and it was it ended up, there was a punishment that says that God started killing them. Anyway, okay. So what is the what's the whole story? What is going on over there? They asked for meat, and Moses so they said, I, "I'm going to give them fish. I can't give them fish." And God finally ended up giving them the birds. Now, first of all, why couldn't Moses give them fit, meat? What's the big deal? Moses took them out of Egypt. He gave them bread from heaven. Uh, you can't do that. Bread from heaven for forty years came down because of Moses. Bread from that's pretty good. 40 days. I mean, there's no religion that claims they have a leader that fed, you know, the masses for 40 years, 3 million people, right? 3 million people gave them bread for 40 years. That's that's a pretty hefty thing. You give them meat one time. People, okay, you know what? I'll take you out to eat. You want some meat? All right, okay. God, you should have prayed to God. God, please, you know, give them meat. Not only that, the fact of the matter is that they did have meat. I mean, they had cows. They took, it says that they, they took cattle with them and such like and they bought food, it says, they bought from others. <clears throat> okay, so the people are complaining for meat and Moses. Says, okay, we're going to see this is a very deep thing going on. Over it's going to tell us something very deep about Moses. <clears> oh, <throat> having to understand. The people, they said, give us meat. And Moses said, what do you want me to do? Give them all the fish in the sea. One second, the people did not ask for fish at all. They wanted basar, they wanted meat. <clears throat> topics like this Moses said Moshe said where am I going to get meat from where am I going to get meat from now Moses could have said to God God give them meat but he didn't say that he said where am I going to get meat how can I get meat? Perish, what does it mean? Shahu, Madrega, Meod Naila. Moses was such a tremendously high level. that he couldn't go down below. The Kabul Chayas to get life from meat. Yabasar, Megashem, meat makes a person, how do you say, physical, crass, connects him to the world. You have to realize here's Moses. We're talking about a person that did not eat anything for 120 days. He went up on the mountain for 40 days. The Jewish people sinned with the golden calf. He came down, broke the tablets, immediately went back up and stayed there for another 80 days. <clears throat> right? He went 40, 40 more days. He asked God for forgiveness. In the last 40 days, God forgave him and gave him the second tablet. So 120 days, he didn't eat, he didn't drink. Right? Now, I don't think there's anybody that can try you know, to do this. And he didn't hold any sort of credit to himself. Right? Look at me. I am the Lord. I didn't eat. He just didn't eat anything. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, Moses says, I can't get relevant to meat. I'm not that level. Now, that, that, the Rebbe, by the way, <clears throat> that was, they asked the Rebbe several times, Lubavitcher Rebbe, and he was not at all in favor of making movies about biblical characters about Samson, about uh, you know, Mordechai, the rebellion of the Jews. and this. He wasn't for it at all, making movies. Why? Because these people were genuine people. Moses, Moshe, Aaron, David, Shimshon, Samson. 
These people were genuine people. Genuine people. What does it mean, genuine people? That they were really in the image of God. And if you look at them from the outside, they look like everybody else. There's nothing really special. But if you look closely, you'll realize that this is that this is what we're supposed to be. This is what a true human being is. Just one second. I'm gonna close this a little bit. Maybe. Okay. And so these were holy people. <clears throat> so the same thing with Moses. Moses maybe looked like everybody else, and everybody sort of treated him that way, but he really was not. Moshe could not come down to the level of meat. Lochin, therefore, Amo Oretz says that a person who is an ignoramus really is not supposed to eat meat. Right? These vegetarian people, they have a good point, but it's from the opposite way. <clears throat> <coughs> they say that meat brings you down, which is true. That's true. But that's the fact of the matter is, is no. They haven't got the power. A person who learns does not learn Torah hasn't got the power to elevate the meat. And Amo Oritz cannot elevate the meat. Only a Talmud Chacham, a person that learns Torah and he embodies the Torah he is able to elevate the meat because we're in this world in order to connect everything, to show that everything is being created by God. Everything has a purpose and to reveal that purpose. <coughs> and a person that doesn't learn Torah, he can't do it. So therefore he says, you want to eat, eat vegetables, eat light things, but you can't eat meat. Of Lagabi Madrigas Moshe, but regarding Moses, that Moses was so tremendously high, Afilo Aliyah Zu, Yurida Takshovlo, that if Moses would eat meat, <coughs> Even to elevate the meat, this was considered to be a very low thing for Moses. Moses' whole thing was to bring godliness down. He was connected to godliness. He was a spokesman for God in this world. His thing was not meat. <clears throat> to bring Moses, to bring meat down, even meat has a high spiritual level. That's what Moses said. There's 600,000 people that I am among them. But he doesn't say people, he said feet. I told Martha, <clears throat> the Jewish people, they are like the feet of Moses. And you said I should give them meat? Perish, what does it mean? It's keep me after since she'anuchi, that I, namely the level of Moshe, the care of Aam, that I am among the people as Eich Tomar. How can you say, give them meat? <clears throat> my Moses says, my whole thing is to be myself, spiritual, holy. I'm the person that didn't eat anything. For 120 days, I'm totally different from everybody else. Right? I'm not relevant to anything really in this world. It's just a big miracle that I can talk to everybody. How am I going to give them meat to eat? Because they want meat. That's what it means. That's what Moses said. You want me to take sheep and, and cows and slaughter for him and, and present it to them. What does it mean? That sheep and uh, cows I'll have to run after them what do I mean in order to draw down myself to this level <clears throat> to, to bring them down I bring pure godliness to down what you want me to bring them meat and, and cows and, and sheep the people of Madrigas Moshe I'll have to go down from my level in order to do this <clears throat> Right? It's like going to King Solomon or somebody and telling him, listen, could you fix my tire on my car? Right? I, can't, I can't. Of course he could fix the tire on the car, but it wouldn't be King Solomon anymore. He'd come down from his level. <coughs> well, as there, therefore, there's a story about the second Rebbe of Chabad that once they brought him, they um, <clears throat> he had to change whatever was something in the house. I don't want to... The workers that were there, so they brought him a, a um, an inventory, a, 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 a what is it called, a, a, bonit, a, a bill, for what they had done, and it was all the details, you know, so many nails, so many this, whatever it was, and he looked at it and he said, uh, I don't know. There's a similar story that they said that they brought him the, the the coins that they had. They had a bunch of coins, and he said he just couldn't count them because he didn't know the different. But to answer other people's questions, he could answer other people's questions. He could deal with it. But physical, mundane things for himself, he wasn't relevant to. He just couldn't do it. 
his mind was simply occupied all the time in these really truly truth, truth, spiritual truths. That the physical things, mundane things for himself, he couldn't, if it was for the sake of another person, so I'd, I'd help another person, that's a spiritual truth. Then he was able to. But to come down to this level, here the people they wanted meat, they didn't really need meat. Moses said, I can't come down to that level. It's not a necessity for them, number one. And even though that I could do it, right? But it would, it would, it's a low level for me. I, I couldn't, I have to completely become a different person. Therefore, he said, in called the Gayayam, maybe I can bring them fish. Everything that is in the physical dry land <clears throat> where everything is revealed is also in the sea. Meat, what is meat in this physical land that was too low for Moses? Too low. He couldn't come down to bring meat. What about the meat that was in the sea? Now the sea, that's talking about the concealed worlds. They have the spirit, that corresponds to the spiritual worlds. The physical world is what's revealed, and the sea is like it says. The angels are like nuna yomans. Is that like? <clears throat> so this meat, which is in the sea, what's the meat of the sea? Fish. Fish is what's called from the concealed world, Oma discasia, and the revealed world. That's the dry land, right? Everything that's on the dry land, it has to be separated from the ground in order to live. But right? even those creatures that live in the ground, gophers or whatever. They have to come up there. <clears throat> they just hide themselves under the ground, but they're not, they don't live from the ground. Fish are part of the sea. Fish are part of the sea. They live in the sea. You take them out of the sea, they die immediately. Right? Die immediately. Take another animal and put it into the sea. It, it, it also dies because it's not, it has to be revealed. The animals that are on the dry land have to be revealed. Fish have to be concealed. That corresponds to what the revealed world, what we see here, the planets and everything. And the concealed world, that's like the angels and things like that. That's So Moses said, okay, maybe, you know, to come down to the level of the angels, that's like the fish. That corresponds to the fish. Maybe I can do that. It says, you read it, that Moses could come down to provide the people meat from the revealed world to eat meat. Should be a basha. He said, lo yipol. Lo yipol lamata. Moses could not come down so low in physical. So how did Moses say? Well, maybe I can do it like this. First of all, maybe I'll come down to the level of fish. Fish, that like corresponds to the hidden worlds, spiritual worlds. <clears throat> fish in the sea. And by means of this, then afterwards, Moses said, maybe I can come down a little bit lower and bring them meat. <clears throat> fish was a big decision, the big, big descent for Moses. Looking there for the custom of the Jewish people is to eat fish first. And in Shabbos, you eat fish first. It says that sometimes tzaddikim become reincarnated into fish. Sparks of me. Okay, you think I understand that? I don't understand. But that's what it says because fish don't require to be slaughtered. Fish are not so low. Fish can be eaten as they are. Technically, you can eat a fish that's alive, but it's not done because fish are disgusting. You're not allowed to make yourself baltashaktu. You're not allowed to make yourself disgusting. It was disgusting. You have to wait for the fish to die. But from the Torah, <coughs> technically, you don't have to wait for the fish to die, technically. And if it's kosher to eat it, not die. And not only that, in any case, if it dies on its own, it's kosher. Fish are already, they're ready to eat, so to speak. They don't have to have such preparation. They're already spiritual, which is not the case. Regular animals or birds, they have to, they're very physical. In order to make them edible, you have to do a uh, Jewish process on them that's called slaughtering. And that's very, very difficult laws and very exact laws, and it's very easy to do it improperly, the slaughtering. But fish don't require slaughtering because fish are on a higher level already. Ah, but regarding Moses, says even Moses, even the fish, Yosef Lehem, even to come down to the level of fish is Gamkein, is Umatzal Lehem, Gamkein is also difficult for Moses. So even this level of fish, yimshach, <clears throat> that should be drawn down and brought down to the people from the level of Moses was almost impossible for Moses. Moses couldn't have done it. Okay, here he explains in, in, in parentheses what it is. The Moses, <clears throat> excuse me, he's above all the tzaddikim. The tzaddikim are called fish in the sea. They're called nuniyoma. 
they're up in the upper worlds, all the other tzaddikim. <clears throat> I, Moses brought to them bread, right? Moses brought to them bread. Why was it difficult for him to bring <clears throat> uh, meat or even fish, it said. I can't even gather fish. Moshe couldn't come to the level of fish. Moses was higher than fish. Fish corresponded to these high tzaddikim. Moses was on a different level. <clears throat> I'll be even though that the that bread is below meat, but nevertheless, the source of bread is very high. This is written in other places. <clears throat> this is written in another place about the bread. Well, the, the bread is a special thing to it, bread. That's why they make a long blessing after bread. So the, Moses' bread, Moses could bring down to them. That's the manna. He brought down bread from heaven. But meat, it was too low for him. He couldn't. And he says even fish was too low. So what did finally God do? God said, okay, Moses, I understand you can't provide meat. You can't provide fish. I'm going to give them birds. HaKadosh Baruch, he gives slav. He gave them these quails or whatever, some type of fish, of, of, of our birds. Shem ofos, that these are birds. That's in this week's Torah portion, right? <clears throat> the aim lamaila, this is a little bit higher than this level of meat, right? That's more spiritual than meat, lower than fish. But it's something like what the people wanted. Kihumi bechinis pene shor. Ox, the meat comes from the face of the ox. And the chayas on the on the, uh, the the face of the chariot that Ezekiel saw and that Zechariah saw, and birds they come from it says from the keruvim, they come from these keruvim that are on the ark. Uh, that's the the gam also how you shmenim and also these the birds were very very fat, like it says in the in the Gomorrah, Tlesa rifta it says that you had to have. Uh, what is it, the 13 pieces of bread, whatever, to soak up the, the fat from these uh, these uh, slava, the slava these, these birds that God gave. Because in its source, red, we said, is that's from gavura, fear. And fat this is from God's kindness. So God, in his great kindness, he gave them these fat birds to try to keep the Jews quiet. And in the end, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to punish you anyway because you're asking <clears throat> not in a nice way. I mean, if they would have asked in a nice way, it might have been different. But they didn't. They all demanded, etc. Okay, so what do we learn over here? That Moses was of such a tremendously high spiritual level. He was so connected to truth in his essence that it was impossible for him to come down to bring to the Jewish people, meat or even fish, it was impossible for him. And it ended up that God himself had to do this miracle and bring the Jewish people uh, the, these birds. Okay, what do we learn from this? We learn that God put us in this world in order to fix up the world. And that in every generation, there has to be somebody like Moses, Moshe, and he's the one that brings Torah down to the Jewish people. But there's going to be a big difference, even though he doesn't talk about it here, between Moshe and the, the Mashiach. Moshe was so high that he really couldn't come down into this to the world. And he also really couldn't <clears throat> come down to the level of the evil people. He couldn't, he couldn't, and he say, save the evil people. People that were evil, the ones that actually bowed down to the golden calf, right? God wanted to wipe out everybody, the ones who bowed down and the ones that just stood idly and didn't stop them. But Moses got the 13 attributes of mercy, but there were still, what is it, 3,000 that actually bowed down, and Moses couldn't save those people. They were, which is not the case of the Mashiach. The Mashiach will be able to come down. That's why he couldn't bring meat. He couldn't come down to this level, so to speak, which is not the case of Mashiach. Mashiach is going to be a person that's going to be devoted to every single detail of the Jewish people and to elevate even the lowest of the low. And here we saw an example of how we started this class. How do you do that to say, if there's something bad in the other person, it's the cause of that bad in the other person is from me. Because I think bad thoughts and I do bad things and I don't think there's nothing, you know, anything about it. But really, it doesn't manifest itself in me. For some, whatever reason it is, it manifests in the other person. And whatever good that I have inside of myself, for whatever reason it is, it doesn't manifest in this other person. It comes manifested in me. So in other words, the bad in the other person I have to point the finger at me. 
and the good that's in me, I have to point the, my finger at the other person. That's the Rebbe, that's the Mashiach, that's the ideas of the Mashiach, that even the bad people can be elevated. Moses was able to elevate even those people who worship the golden, the, the Mashiach, even the people who worship the golden calf. And the simple reason is, is because the reason that they're worshiping the golden calf and these whatever is woke Jews or communist Jews or whatever that they are, is because of me. I, I'm the one that's causing it with my thoughts and my deeds and with this. So on one hand, you know, you could say, well, I should feel pretty bad, but that's also not right. That that just that just how do you say continues this wheel of bad going on. I have to try to change myself. I have to improve myself first of all by thinking good about the other person. That's the beginning, and that makes a little more good in the world and a little less bad to react to. And that will improve the world. And that's the idea of Moshe. That Moses, Moshe was not able to bring meat. Mashiach will bring meat and he'll bring meat to everybody. As we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow I think we'll start a mimer in Shira Shirim. We'll see. Now let's do the Yom Yom.